Hey guys, what's going on? My name is Liz Friday 101. Welcome back to another episode of DDLC. In this video, we're going to be co uh, continuing the reflection side story. So this is going to be part two of reflection. And the last one was a little bit rough, so let's see if we can make it any better today. A new day arrives. Sayori arrives at the club room earlier than usual. That is not late. As she enters, it appears to be empty still. So she sits down at a desk and pulls out a sheet of paper, primed to jot down her thoughts. Sayori's made a bit of a habit of scribbling her thoughts and feelings onto paper, wherever possible, as it tends to serve as her best inspiration for poetry. My heart feels vacant because a ship sailed away. Yo. Yeah! Natsuki! Natsuki pokes her head out from behind the closet door. Ah, <laughs> sorry I didn't mean to scare you, but it would have been a lot more awkward if I didn't say anything. I doubt you want me listening in on your poetry thing. Yeah, thanks for realizing that. Should I let you finish up then? Oh no, it wasn't... I mean, I should just do it wherever it's convenient. You're not interrupting. Where's Monica, by the way? Oh, she's out in the hallway. Huh? Why? Well, just in case she runs into Yuri. Sometimes Yuri's too nervous to come into the club room by herself, so... Oh, jeez, does Yuri really let things bother her for that long? She can't control her feelings. For some people, it's really hard to cope when you got bad thought in your head. Maybe you could distract yourself for a little while, but as soon as you use just you and your thoughts again, it comes back. Ugh. Huh? I just want us to have a normal club meeting. It's a lot easier to pretend it never happened and if we just ignore it and move on. I don't want to be bothered by this. It's so stupid. Her opinion of me doesn't matter anyway. Besides, it makes me feel really guilty and I hate that too. It's okay to have feelings. It doesn't make you weak. Let's figure out this together. Fine. Only because you're so good at this stuff. Let's try to come up with a happy scene. Maybe that'll help us understand where your bad feelings are coming from. Well, I was happy with the way things were before we had to have that conversation yesterday. What part of the conversation made you upset? Was it Yuri being mean about the manga? Maybe, I doubt it though. Because my friends and other people make fun of manga all the time, and I just brush it off and ignore them. But something about it really got to me this time, and I hate it for not letting that happen. Is it because it came from Yuri? No, why would that matter? I mean, well, well maybe. I just, I hate that she thinks she's so much better than me, all because she likes to pretend to be all sophisticated. Yeah, that's what it is. At least other people decide that they don't like me or manga or whatever. But Yuri acts like she's too good to even give it a chance. I'm sorry. Everyone deserves a chance. Yeah, exactly. Would you give Yuri's books a chance? <laughs> After this? Obviously not. What about before this? Well, I would until I got bored, which wouldn't take very long. But if you actually keep an open mind, it's not hard to realize that a story can be deep and meaningful without being needlessly complicated. I see. But you know, I like Yuri's books. Yeah, you like manga more, right? Sayori shakes her head. I like them both. I like them in different ways, but I like them both. I mean, the manga, it's really honest and fun, and it's easy to just let go with. And the fantasy is a lot to interpret and uncover. It's really rewarding to have some good, quiet time together with it. But the most important thing is that both of, well, that both the manga and fantasy are true to themselves. So I love them both, and I think there's room for both of them to be in the same club together. I just feel like maybe, maybe they have more in common than you would think. How do you get along with everyone so well? I always get into fights with people. Like, first it was with Monaco, and I was new to the club, and then it was you, and now it's Yuri. And I'm always like, oh, that person's being such a jerk, and if they just realize that, then they could at least get along. But nobody else has this problem. I just keep running away from the, the reality that everyone's just a jerk to me because nobody likes me. And I don't know why. I don't want to know, and I don't know what to do about it. I don't know what's wrong with me. I hate it. Natsuki. Sayori so puts a comforting hand on Natsuki's shoulder. You're a wonderful person. You deserve to be loved as much as everyone else. Everyone has different ways they like to communicate, you know? And then sometimes it makes it harder for us to understand each other. I think that sometimes, sometimes we get lucky and we make friends who are really good at the same kinds of communication. And it feels like you magically connect with them. But other times, even if both are really nice, it's easy for them to misunderstand each other or to get the communication wrong. It's something that Yuri struggles a lot with, too. It can be really hard and takes a lot of, like, reflection and self-awareness and vulnerability. I'm bad at that one. Vulnerability. I always have to be the strongest. What do you mean? Tell me about that part of you. Well, it sounds stupid, but I'm really used to people being mean to me. Like my friends, and I guess my dad, when I don't get good grades or even stupid things, like if my room isn't clean. So what am I going to do? Cry about it? If I let myself get upset, then it's just letting them win. I'm better than that. I'm better than all of them. So, things always have to be someone else's fault. It feels like if something goes wrong, there's even a tiny hint that it might be my fault, then 
I just get really angry and I find a ways to blame everyone else instead. You see yourself as better than Yuri? If I said that, then I would just sound really full of myself. No, our thoughts and feelings are two different things. Even if we don't like our feelings, we have to understand them if we want to learn more about ourselves. That's part of vulnerability, you know? Accepting that we have feelings that we don't like. I, I hate that. My feelings make me a bad person. Because my feelings just want to tell me that I'm so much better than her. That is, she's judgmental know-it-all who's stuck in her edgy phase and I'm just way above that garbage. But I'm terrible for feeling that way. You're not terrible. You are not your feelings. But you are not your feelings. Say that to yourself out loud. Fine. I am not my feelings. That way, I like to picture it as that those feelings are like your roommate. You live in the same house and you gotta see each other every day. And even if you can ignore each other most of the time, you're gonna run into each other every now and then and it's gonna make you feel like poop. So, the other option is to get to know each other. You can communicate and learn from each other and even help each other change for the better. Does that may help you understand? How do you know so much about this stuff? I just have a roommate that can be really hard to get along with, called depression. Depression? But you're like the happiest person I know. I'm not my feelings. That's a good way to look at it, honestly. I want to be a good person like you. Aw, you little sweetheart. We're all good people. You, Yuri, and Monica. And I think Yuri would eventually learn this about you. Natsuki remained silent, feeling a little overwhelmed. Despite Sayori's kind reassurance, a, comp a complicated mixture of pain and sadness seems to fill her, as though flowing from a wound inside her. Was it a result of her vulnerability? No. It was as though she was inflicted a wound after becoming vulnerable. It was as though she began to rediscover an old wound, one that cannot simply be bandaged and left alone for any longer. Yeah, it's a little rough thing. Yuri, what are you doing all the way over there? I was looking for you. I Please don't yell at me. Oh, well, I'm not going to yell at you. I just wanted to say that I'm sorry about what happened yesterday. It was unfair of me to put everyone in a spot like that. Next time I won't just try and jump in and solve everyone's problems. I guess it's a bad habit of mine. You're not mad at me? I thought you were the one mad at me. I was so awful yesterday. Yuri curls up recalling the details of the argument. I can't even have a normal conversation without saying something wrong and making everyone upset. Hold on, that's not what happened at all. Let's not let's talk about this, okay? Yuri pauses for a second, then manages to nod. Monica takes a seat next to her on the staircase. I'm having a lot of negative thought patterns and I can't get away from them. What kind of negative thought patterns? Like everyone hates me, especially Natsuki. Oh, that's terrible. I don't think Natsuki hates you. How do you know? Well, because... Monica thinks back to the time that she herself found herself in an altercation with Natsuki. How a display of maturity from Monica was enough for Natsuki to reevaluate her own feelings as well. I think... I think Natsuki's just naturally defensive. I think she acts mean when she feels the need to protect herself. But, you know, she's not really a bad person. In fact, I think she can be really thoughtful and considerate. She just... Well... I guess the way it works is that she wants to receive some degree of kindness first before she feels comfortable returning it. Oh, but that means the burden's on me, and I don't know how to say things that make people like me. Every time I open my mouth, I just... Yuri shakes her head at herself and tugs on her hair. It's okay, Yuri, you don't need to beat yourself up. I think anyone would like you if I had a chance to get to know you. Well, unfortunately, the opposite is true. That's why I'm not talkative anymore in the first place. Just because everyone used to think that I was weird and talk about me behind my back. That's just what happens when I draw attention to myself. Now, Suki even says she found it more respectable when people speak their minds, so I did, and then she hated me anyway. That was enough to confirm my fears. But, but Sayori and I like you, and we've gotten to know you a lot by now, right? Hmm? Yuri doesn't seem to have a response. Hey, what do you think of Natsuki? I, I don't think about her. That's not what I meant, really. Ah, I just... Hmm. I was just wondering if you had an opinion of her. I do. What is it? Natsuki seems to bring out the worst in me, and I feel really ashamed of it. I like to think of myself as a fairly sophisticated person. So for someone to just treat me like I'm inferior... Oh. So for someone to just treat me like I'm inferior, despite my tastes, that's just the worst kind of insult coming from someone like her. And it makes me feel bad things about her. But everyone else seems to like her, so the only explanation is that it's me who's doing the wrong again. And my feeling about her are wrong. And I'm wrong to get upset over something so childless and inconsequential. No, Yuri, feelings are never wrong. Well, they're not right. That's just the thing. Feelings are never right or wrong, you know? They're just 
They're just a state of being that we don't always have control over. But that doesn't mean they have to control us. I feel like that's something I learned around the time I first started this club. We can hate ourselves for feeling a certain way about things. Or we can, you know, just acknowledge that they exist and try to understand them better. I can never be mad at you for just feeling a certain way. It's about how you handle them. And I think working through feelings is a great opportunity for teamwork. Yuri wears a dejected expression. You make it sound so easy. You're so mature. And so good with people. I feel like such a child in comparison. Oh, Yuri, I'm far from perfect. But these are learned skills that didn't come naturally to me either. It's really hard to, like, reflect on yourself and separate your feelings from your thoughts. I just want to be a good person. Well, I think it takes a good person to get this far. That's not good enough. I want to be able to communicate to her. Communicate what? How I feel. How it makes me feel frustrated and upset when she's so negative and dismissive of the things that mean so much to me. And how it... How it reminds me of me. Because I know what it's like to misunderstand and angry at everyone. I know that telling yourself you're better than everyone else is just a defense mechanism. We're just people. We're fragile and unstable. I'm just... I'm tired of that getting in the way. I can't stand it when the piece is disturbed like this. Yeah, you can't focus on your reading when the piece is disturbed, right? Because I... Because... The literature club should be happy for everyone. Monica looks at Yuri in adoration. I feel like Sayori must be rubbing off on me because I really want a hug from you now. Hmm. <laughs> Sorry, I didn't mean to make you uncomfortable. No, um, I mean, well, if you wanted to, then I really wouldn't mind, so... Monica pulls Yuri into a short embrace. You're so gentle, and I love it when you communicate your feelings. I feel lucky to see that side of you. And I'm sure Natsuki will, too. I'm going to write her a letter. Oh, a letter? What a great idea. Just because I'm not good at talking, especially under pressure. I always let my feelings get the best of me, and I forget to say all the important things and things I don't mean. Well, I think a letter would be wonderful. Such a nice way to communicate. Yuri's face hardens with determination. People don't naturally gravitate towards me like they do for you or Sayori. My personality just isn't suited for that. And I wouldn't want it to be. But something I've learned is that friendships don't always just magically appear out of thin air. For instance, I would have never seen myself making friends with someone like Sayori. We're an opposite in a lot of ways, but I'm friends with her because she puts so much effort into understanding me so that we can get along. I think it was the same with you. You both gave me a lot of time and patience. And I wonder if she, if she feels the same way. Natsuki? Yuri nods. I always thought that if I wanted to make more friends, I had to be someone that I'm not. There's a type of person or a magical formula I should have to follow in order to make someone like me. And that's just like me to think that, always so occupied with myself that I fail to understand other people. Yuri shakes her head. Friendship always happens when you think about the other person. When you offer time and effort to understand them and respect them, you trust that, that they also want to be a good person. That's what I've learned through my observations in the literature club. Observations? Monica's caught by surprise. Yuri's always kept to herself so much that it's so unusual to hear her suddenly talking about the club like this. But Yuri gently smiles to herself. You always let me listen to your thoughts about people. Sayori, too. And it makes me happy because I learn a lot of things. That's so sweet. I had no idea that it meant that much to you. Monica never really thought of it, but in the past couple of weeks, Yuri seemed to be especially attentive when it came to the problems and concerns of others, always wanting to listen and learn more about her friends in the club. It's true, Sayori and Monica are naturally more comfortable with other people and can easily work through situations of conflict, but that doesn't make them better people. Everyone has strengths and weaknesses and the capacity to improve, and the first step towards improving oneself is reflection and self-awareness. It's something that Yuri never gave herself enough credit for, but that Monica can recognize as an incredible trait. And with that, her confidence in the club is restored. A very shy girl with long, pretty hair is wandering through the bustling lunchtime hallways, her fist pressed into her collarbone. When she finds out about the literature club's president's classroom, she stands at the door, glancing all around her before peeking inside. Monica's sitting and chatting with a group of unknown friends. Yeah, as expected, this was a bad idea after all. Suddenly, Monica glances at the door, making the girl panic and duck out of sight. Before she can regain composure and decide for sure to leave, the classroom door gently opens. Yuri, what a surprise to see you during lunch. Yuri squeaks her response. Please help me. What? Is everything okay? Yuri shakes her head. I don't know how to write letters. <laughs> Thank goodness. I thought it was some kind of emergency. Monica briefly glances over her shoulder at her other friends. 
Do you want some help? We can go find an empty classroom or something. Is that okay? I feel bad at taking you away from your friends. It's totally fine, I promise. We weren't really doing anything. One sec. Monica trots back to her classroom and says something like, I gotta go to her friends, then grabs a pen off her desk before returning to Yuri. Okay, let's find somebody quiet. Yuri nods and follows Monica as the two of them set off. How are you today? Huh, me? Well, yes. Oh, gosh, sorry, I was just caught off off guard. I'm doing well today, just tired, and I've never seem to have good enough sleep over during the week. How come? I don't know, I guess I just easily distract it. Gets really sucked into things and start neglecting the time. Me too, I do that too. <laughs> hey, this classroom is empty, let's go in here. After peering inside, Monica opens the classroom door and the two of them enter. Yuri's moment of relaxation ends. She watches as Monica pulls two chairs up to the same desk and then obeys as Monica beckons her to take a seat. She stares down at the empty desk. You nervous? I don't want to do this. We don't. We don't have to. We can just come up with something else. Yuri shakes her head. It's my chance to do something good. I need to take initiative. Gosh, you must be really determined. How hard is it to step out of your comfort zone? I'll be sure to encourage you. Yuri pushes through her anxiety and grabs a handful of lined paper from her notebook. Then she picks up her pen. Hey, not bad. Wow, you're left-handed. That's neat. Yeah, I never noticed that neither. Ah, yeah. Now I don't have to worry about bumping into your arm. Monica playfully rubs her shoulder against Yuri's. Ah, sorry, just being silly, I guess. Anyway, are we about to start by listening to different things you want to say to her? Hmm, Yuri thinks. I feel embarrassed all of a sudden. Ah, that's okay. How about some of the things you said to me yesterday? But, never mind, I guess I'll try. Yuri thinks for a moment longer, tension evident. Then she writes the word reflection. This is about my reflection on our behavior. The key question is why we act towards each other. We haven't been able to separately be friends with Sayori and Monica. That's me. Yes, it is. So, Yuri, Yuri thinks. I've been able to befriend the two of you because you've taken the time to understand my needs and respect my interests. Mm-hmm. The same goes for Natsuki, too. We started off as pretty hostile to each other because I was so worried about getting what I wanted, and she just wanted to be respected more than anything. Once I stopped making it all about me, she was able to do the same. I want to do that, too. So what kind of things do you want to do for her? I want, I want to do the same things for her that I like to receive. I like it when people respond positively to the things I talk about and not just brush it off. I like when my feelings are taken seriously. And I like when you and Sayori trust that I want to be a good person, even when I'm not doing a good job at it. Let's write those things down, okay? Yuri writes some things down. I think the most important thing to remember here is that Natsuki's feeling vulnerable, so we should make her sure that the letter puts her first. It's harder when you're feeling hurt, but it never helps to just tell someone all the things that they're doing wrong. I think first you need to make sure they know that you're ready to respect them and listen to them and admit the things you feel you could do better. Then finally, you ask what you like in return. How does that sound for the structure? It could be three paragraphs, one for each of those points. I like that. My thoughts were so disorganized, I had no idea how to come up with any kind of structure. You're so amazing at these things. Oh, stop. You've done so much more than I have, you know? You spent so much time reflecting on being open-minded. That's the hardest thing for anyone to do. All I'm doing is helping you put it on a piece of paper. So I think you're the amazing one. Mmm. Monica gives Yuri a quick hand squeeze. But she lets go, caught by surprise when Yuri curls her fingers to hook Monica's hand in place. For a while, they sit there in silence, save for the occasional scratching of Yuri's pen against the paper. Yesterday, you told me something that I'm thinking about a lot. What was that? The thing about feelings aren't right or wrong, that they're just a state of being that we need to come to terms with. It made me think about... How a person's behavior isn't just always how they decide to be. It always make up for their past experiences and their insecurities. I think that helps me see other people as actual people rather than as an insignificant side characters who are out to get me somehow. Is that how you felt about Natsuki? Yuri nods. But in reality, everyone is trying their best and everyone wants to be happy. Monica peers over Yuri's paper, but to her surprise, Yuri pulls it in closer, partially covering it with her arm. <laughs> I have to be able to read it to help you out, you know. It's okay. My thoughts are a lot more organized now after having been able to talk to you about it. Now that I'm actually putting it on paper, I realize that I'd really prefer others not to read it. Yuri laughs softly to herself, a rare expression. I'm kind of glad to hear that, actually. I somehow keep finding ways to butt into this whole thing. I've done enough damage. <laughs> but it's also been so wonderful talking about this. I mean, I always thought you were really smart, but... That's why they're both smiling there. 
Yuri smiles. I will always be terrible at those things. People are just so incomprehensible to me. I'll never get the hang of being one. <laughs> but listening to you so much has really helped me feel a sense of some things. So just don't call it damage, please. Monica gives Yuri a gentle smile. I can't believe I come to this club looking for fantasy geeks and all I got was real friends who value me. Is that a joke? Of course it is. <laughs> I still can't tell with you. Sorry. You know, I love it. Please never change. As you wish? Yuri glances at the clock. We're almost out of time. Will you be able to finish? Before the end of the day, probably. But I don't want it to come to the club the same day that Natsuki reads it. I'm too shy. I can give it to her instead if you'd like. Yuri nods. As long as you promise not to read it. Of course, I promise. Thank you. Yuri exhales and the two stand up. I'll message you when it's ready. Monica nods. Good luck. I'm here if you need me. Yuri returns a nod. The two depart. That's nice. I like that. Oh, I got some mail to read, too. Let's see. Ethics. Simply put, it's not our job to arbitrarily decide upon some code of ethics just because we're the first ones to do this. To our knowledge... That's the government's job to figure out, as long as we've made enough headway for it to no longer apply to us. It's fundamentally flawed to apply ethical reasoning to this anyway, because humanity's code of ethics is based upon nothing more than our knowledge and understandings of life forms similar to ourselves. We don't have ethics for killing bacteria or plants, only for the creatures that we can con convincingly project our emotions onto. The humans in our VMs operate completely differently from us on a fundamental level, and therefore should not be taken any more seriously than a machine that's programmed to print, I feel sad. We're engineers, not philosophers. Okay, fair enough then. I suppose I won't. And then the pictures, of course. Let's see here. Did I get the... Oh, hey, so look at that. Finish the side story reflection too. That's a nice one. I like that. Let's see if I can use that as a thumbnail at some point. See, did I get my background? I did. A small, quiet stairwell which Yuri sometimes prefers as a reading location. Yeah, see that. Uh... All right, thanks for guys for watching. If you guys want to see more DDLC, be sure to leave a like. Be sure to like, comment, subscribe to this video for more awesome content. And I will see you guys later.